Hi, I'm Dr. Paul. Welcome to another episode of Ask Your Pediatrician. The topic for today is constipation. Now, I want to set the record straight. When it comes to newborns and little infants, if your baby is having a bowel movement every week or even two weeks, but the consistency is normal, that's not constipation. That is a normal phenomenon in a percentage of newborns. They just digest, usually it's a breastfed baby, they digest that mom's milk so completely that there's just nothing left to, to pass. And they do have these sort of fussy days and big explosions every week or two, but that's not constipation. There's nothing special you need to do in that instance. Constipation is hard, either little pellets or huge, large, hard bowel movements, stool. They're trying to pass it. They're just having a rough time. And they're probably going less frequently than normal. They're avoiding passing bowel movements because they hurt. And in the older kid, that's a condition called encoparesis, where they just stool hold because it hurts so bad, they don't want to pass a stool. So they'll do anything to avoid passing a stool. And in that situation, you've got to get pretty aggressive at getting them cleaned out so that they can start to you know, have their bowel that has become distended kind of regain its tone so they can get into a regular rhythm again. But regular constipation, let's say in an infant, what do you do? Because this is a common thing. A lot of times when you first add solid foods, which remember we're now recommending you add solids at four months, not six months. When you add solid foods, we used to say add rice cereal or baby cereals. That's not my recommendation anymore. Those cereals were fortified with iron, which was a good thing. Everybody seems to be iron deficient this first year of life, but iron is constipating. So if you avoid doing that, you'll have less trouble. So the, the iron fortified cereals are not necessarily a great thing. I don't like rice cereal because of high arsenic content. I don't like gluten, wheat, barley, rye, or spelt, period, at least in the United States. It is, to our bodies, basically our immune system sees it as a toxin, and too many people, I would say the majority of people in the US, are reacting to gluten as if it's a toxin. So it's starting to stimulate the immune system, autoimmune disorders, just stay away from it. But it's also constipating. So another reason to stay away from gluten. Well, what can you do in infancy? Prune juice is magic. So prunes that are cooked and then pureed, or prune juice itself, works amazing. A little extra water, as long as your child is, you're, if you've got a little tiny baby and they're not getting enough nutrients, you don't want to give them too much water. Fill them up with water and they don't gain weight. But as long as they're gaining weight, add some water to the diet, two to four ounces a day, that may help. You've got the fruit juices, which I generally don't like juices, but if you're in an infant age, a little bit of juice could help. Occasionally it's interesting, apple juice, pear juice can help constipation, it can make constipation worse. It's, it, it's an individual thing, so you just have to try it. I've never seen prunes not work, though, if you give enough. So that's a good one. You can also just, you know, give a little Pedialyte if you're worried that they're getting dehydrated. But generally, natural liquid would be fine. Now, I want to address the severe constipation. Whether it's an infant or more, more typically it's an older child, what, what we call encoparesis. You know, the, the food goes through your intestinal tract, colon, out the rectum. When they get so constipated that it hurts, folks, if you've ever been constipated and had your anus just tear, it's sharp, knife-like, excruciating pain. And kids just don't want to experience that. It's like deer in the headlights fear. They're just not gonna do it. So what you do is you give something that's gonna just clean them out over a relatively, you know, days, not weeks or months, because they're already suffering. I usually like to use a little bit of Miralax. Now the adult dose for Miralax, it's a little bottle and the cap has a, a line in it. 17 grams is the usual adult daily dose. You can do that much in a you know, school age, teenager, child for sure. A little bit less, a couple tablespoons maybe for a tablespoon or two for an infant, a little bit more for an older child. We have a uh, link to a dosing chart and some guidelines for constipation. But a little bit of Miralax, it works by drawing water into the intestinal tract. So it's just increasing the fluidity of your stool. And that's really what's missing. The longer stool stays in the colon, the job of the colon is to reabsorb water into the body. So the harder it gets. You need frequent, I'd say daily or at least every other day bowel movements. If they have two or three a day, fine. Especially while you're getting them cleaned out. Those kids who are so constipated that it's gotten dry and hard in their colon and rectum, you're gonna have to lubricate because they're just, it hurts, they can't pass it. So there's two ways of lubricating. One is mineral oil. You can get a tablespoon or two, mix it into some pudding or something they're gonna eat. You 
eat the mineral oil, it's not absorbed, stays in the intestinal tract and just lubricates as you're getting them cleaned out. The other thing would be a pediatric glycerin suppository. It's about the, that size of my little pinky. You just pop it in their anus until it disappears, bloop, gone, and it will melt and lubricate as that stool passes. So, and a lot of water. Miralax won't work if you don't have extra fluids. So Miralax, if necessary, mineral oil for those kids who are really impacted with really hard stool, lots of fluids, more water, and you can get them through this. Now, once you've got that child cleaned out, you wanna fix the diet, right? It's, it's just, you're toying with fixing the diet so you get the, the right balance. I had a child who, whenever he ate cheese, pellets, like hard rocks, prunes, balanced it out. So we either had to cut out the cheese completely or anytime he ate cheese, we had to add prunes. This was when he was between ages, oh, probably one and two to three. Um, you will figure out the most constipating foods are the dairies, the soys, um, anything with iron. Sometimes, you know, it's interesting. We think of fruits and vegetables are always good, and they are, and you should eat more fruits and vegetables, but the high fiber fruits and vegetables, uh, squash and sweet potatoes, things like that, if you eat a lot of that without a lot of other things, fruit and other things, you can get constipated even on a vegetarian-like diet. Constipation is just an annoyance. Figure this out. I've given you a few tools. I hope that's helpful. I'm Dr. Paul. Thanks for watching. Uh, please put us a like to support the channel. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. It's helpful to the channel. And I wish you a good day. We'll see you soon on another video.